Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today we've got a video for you about the radiation that might be left over on the battleship. Iowa class battleships were built with some radioactive materials, including the use of radium in glow in the dark dials for things such as sound powered phone jacks and uh, the various clinometers that show uh, whether the ship is rocking and rolling. All of these get swapped out during the ship's career. And as far as we know, there's no test, or, and as far as tests have shown, there's no residual radiation on the ship from those. However, Iowa class battleships were capable of carrying nuclear warheads and carried radioactive ammunition for some of the weapons. So we had a group from the Coast Guard who was doing some radiation training on board the ship. And uh, we gave them free training in exchange for asking them to test a couple of places on board. So uh, chronologically, this is the first space on the battleship that would have carried uh, nuclear warheads. This is a 16 inch powder magazine, which we believe around 1955 was modified to carry the warheads for the Project Katy nuclear projectiles. There's a link in the description below to some videos we filmed in and around this space before talking about Project Katy and the research we did to uh, determine that we think this is the space where it was. Uh, anyway, we had them come in here with some sophisticated technology to test this. Uh, that would have possibly been on board sometime between 1955 and 1957. So it, it's been a long time and we just wanted to see, hey, is there evidence that uh, it was probably a uranium-based warhead uh, off the top of my head? that any like weapons grade uranium or hydrogen or plutonium, whatever, is showing up in this space, any residuals from that. And uh, they came in here and they tested and the background radiation in this room is actually lower than it is if we were standing out on deck exposed. In fact, the, the heavy armor plating of the ship, and this being a magazine, we are in the armored citadel, uh, is completely protecting this ship from even external radiation. Uh, so this is a very good place to not uh, get any radiation. They did have one of their instruments spike briefly and uh, it was uh, shipboard radiation spike or, or something like that, which is just all of the metal of the ship sometimes causes their instrumentation to give them a spike but there was no steady uh, level and there was no evidence of uh, long-term anything. So, so that was completely uh, disregarded in terms of findings. We were really, really hoping that tests like this could prove, oh yeah, there, there's a little bit of background radiation here. This space definitely once held 10 uranium warheads or you know, some, something like that. Um, but in this space, we were not able to. Let's go to the next space. Another space that uh, we thought might have residual radiation is this. This is one of four 20 millimeter SeaWiz magazines for the Phalanx Gatling guns. In the 1980s, those fired a depleted uranium projectile to take down incoming missiles or aircraft, as opposed to uh, the modern ones which fire a tungsten projectile. So, we were worried that, hey, if they stored large quantities of depleted uranium in these magazines, maybe there is some residual radiation here. And again, just like down below, the radiation levels inside the ship, even though this is not the armored part, it's significantly uh, thinner up here. In fact, it's just mild steel that was slapped on in the 80s to enclose this space. Um, it is less residual radiation than if I was standing outside. So, so far, uh, our results for being able to prove or disprove that Iowa class battleships even carried nuclear material of some sort are looking real, real bad. Um, even where we think that we should definitely be seeing radiation, we're, we're not getting any. Uh, and it is an interesting uh, lesson in 
inside, very well protected, even if once radio radiological stuff was here, as opposed to um, just being outside and having radiation from the sun and from whatever other background stuff getting to you. We have one more place to check out. So the final possibility for radioactive material on the battleship were the nuclear-tipped Tomahawk cruise missiles, the TLAN ends that Iowa-class battleships could have carried, but the Navy will neither confirm nor deny. We were really hoping to be able to confirm or deny it with this test, but we weren't able to. We checked all of the armored box launchers. Almost certainly, they wouldn't have all been loaded with nuclear Tomahawks. Maybe one or two of them throughout the ship's career would have carried them. Uh, so we started out testing the front end of the missile launchers, thinking that, hey, th that's where the warhead would be. Maybe, maybe we'll be able to get something. Now, it's worth pointing out that all of these launchers are welded shut, so we couldn't just like crack a door open and, and stick the tester in there. However, when we came around to the backside, uh, we were getting fairly consistent readings from all of the launchers. Now that said, these consistent readings were in a unit of five or six. I don't know what that uh, unit is of, but the uh, inspectors said that they were not concerned unless they started getting readings of 4,500. So we were able to detect uh, the presence of radiation here, but nothing hazardous or uh, in any large quantity. And uh, one possibility for that is that through burning hydrocarbons, those impure fuels, uh, and, and you see this a lot more with coal than with oils and liquid hydrocarbons, but um, th those sorts of things are impure and they may have radioactive elements in them, very, very lightly so. So in spaces where you've burned a ton of, again, usually coal, but uh, in this case, jet fuel, uh, you may get uh, residual radiation where all of that is left behind when the uh, fuel is burned up. So this is a little bit confirmed by the fact that not only were we getting it at the back end of the launchers, but we were also getting it here in the uh, ceramic blast shields that are protecting the rest of the superstructure from that blast back. Uh, so at the end of our day, if we're going by the uh, old Mythbusters, logic of, of busted, plausible, and confirmed, we weren't able to confirm it, but we also got readings, so we aren't able to uh, deny uh, or bust the allegation that Iowa-class battleships could and therefore did carry nuclear warheads. Uh, so we're going to stamp this one with our plausible stamp. Uh, Iowa-class battleships were capable of carrying nuclear warheads or other radiological material at various times throughout their career, and the Navy will neither confirm nor deny that they did. There is still a chance that they did, and our tests did not prove conclusively one way or the other. I cannot stress this enough. The tests did not find any dangerous or even close to dangerous levels of radiological material. In fact, being on the battleship is safer than being almost anywhere else with regards to radiation and even like normal safe background radiation. So uh, this should not impact your plans to come out and visit the ship. Can you think of any other radiological materials from the back half of the 20th century that might have been on Iowa class battleships that we didn't think about? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourself. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to help the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so that more people find out about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.